Well, that's a good lead-in for our next question, which is uh, 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 basically that the Arthur W. Page Center at Penn State and the Page Society, of which you're a member, uh, their aim is to help individuals become counselors to yeah. leadership and, and all these areas of change that are happening in, in corporations today. How can individuals best prepare themselves for this role as counselors to leadership? Yeah. Well, I think it goes beyond counseling today, particularly if you're in a chief communications officer role. And you have to deeply understand the business. I think increasingly today, and you know, I work today in the technology environment, and there's constant change in technology and, and e-commerce. And you can be disrupted from so many different directions every day. And so you almost have to think like a general manager would and really be deeply grounded in the business, the business model, and what the business is trying to solve for. And then your role as a chief communications officer is to apply your communications expertise to how do we help address those business opportunities and business challenges. So I think it goes beyond an, an advisory role and, and really to be effective in today's environment, you have, to, you have to be a strategic business partner and that means you have to be able to exhibit almost a general manager-like mindset and a general manager type understanding of the business and what the opportunities are. And then your role is to bring communication solutions to those business opportunities and business challenges. What would you say the status of, uh, of chief uh, corporate communications uh, persons is in, in this environment today? Is it uh, growing in importance? Is it diminishing? I think if you, if you stop to think about companies you admire, companies you respect, companies that you see doing innovative things, I think more often than not you would see the chief communications officer role increasing in strategic importance in those companies. Um, you know, our profession is rapidly changing and rapidly evolving, so every company is structured a little differently and modeled a little differently. But when I look across industries and across our competitive set and, and across the global business environment, Companies that I see innovating and really driving effective change, both with their employees and with their broader group of stakeholders, typically in those companies, the chief communications officer role is increasing in strategic importance, not diminishing. What are the most important issues, the enduring truths that you've learned in your career? You got to keep it real. I mean, you've always got to, you know, again, back to authenticity. What, what are we really trying to solve for and, and, and are we simplifying it? Um, are, are we telling an authentic story in a transparent way? You know, is, are we delivering our messages? Are we really engaging with people? I think those are the universal truths because when you don't do that, people get that. People understand that. And, and it undermines credibility, it undermines everything that, that good brands and great companies stand for. You know, great companies are, are, are typically values-driven companies. They have a strong set of principles, they have a strong set of values that they live by. You know, business cycles come and go. Companies have good times and companies have bad times. Great companies come through the bad time even stronger because they're grounded in a clear set of values and what they believe in and they're grounded in a clear set of ethics and operating principles and that helps them weather downturns, the inevitable downturns in a business cycle and come out stronger. And I think, you know, in the communications profession, always digging down to what are we really trying to solve for? What's the real business issue here? What are we really trying to communicate? Who are we really trying to engage? Do we really understand who our intended audience is? And what action do we want them to take after they've heard our message and engaged with us? You know, those are critically important things to always keep in mind. You typically derail when you lose sight of those, those things. What are the changes you've observed in the practice of public relations during your career? I think you might have alluded to some of this actually in your, uh, when you were talking about your career trajectory, but what are the significant changes that you've seen? Well, I think that the most significant change I see is, is in leading companies, communications is becoming a core business strategy. And, um, and, and executives at these types of companies, operating management at these type of companies, see communications as a strategic operating tool and something that's essential to the business. And I think that's very different than when um, communications was seen as an afterthought or communications was seen as more of a support function or a service function versus a strategic function in, in the organization. 
And so that change is, is, is very exciting. Um, I, I am more excited, I've been in this for 20, 25 years now, 25 years now, there's more opportunity and more innovation happening in our profession and in the communications world than I've ever seen. And that's incredibly exciting. I was having a conversation a few weeks ago with a friend. I was trying to imagine what it would be like to be in a journalism school today or in a communications program today. And I think it would be an extraordinary thing because the opportunities you have as someone just starting out your career are exponentially greater than when I was going through school. When I was going through school, you either pick the editorial track or the advertising track. Yeah. And if you're on the editorial track, are you going into newspapers or are you going into broadcast? And now it's like, well, how do I want to communicate? Do I want to be my own media outlet? You know, I'll create my own blog and I'll be my own publisher and I'll create my own audience. Or, or how, do I, how do I engage, how do I help shape new media? Uh, it's an incredibly exciting time. And, uh, and I would encourage people just starting out in their career to embrace that. And one thing that I see now, you know, being this far into my career is you never stop learning, right? And, and the, there are a lot of external factors forcing you to reevaluate and rethink the way you, you do things. But, but I guess another universal truth is you, you've always got to fight complacency and, and inertia, right? You push yourself to innovate. Um, because that's what will help you grow and develop and it'll make you a better communicator and it'll make the organization you're working for a better organization. Always figure out where the next innovation is coming from and, and drive for that.